Hey, man. I just sent uh, some uh, on the on the chat. I just sent some information for those of you that might want to just copy and paste it. Uh, I, I'm giving you information on. Um, actually, I'm giving you information on uh, Psalms 91, and it is a powerful. I just sent you a powerful, powerful uh, confession in Psalms 91. We'll be doing some some other confessions that we can make because see the power of death and life uh, is in our tongue. And it's so important. Now I'm I'm coming to you to and, and, and hello everybody. Happy Memorial Day because that's what that's what time it is. It's Memorial Day. I'm sitting at home outside and it is a wonderful day. And I hope uh, you all can uh, able to hear me because I didn't do a whole lot to our my computer. No more than just uh, uh, set it up so that I could, that uh, I can that uh, I can do my live stream at home. I'm just taking it easy. Not at the church, not in the studio, not not anywhere near there. I'm just just cooling out at the home, at the house, and uh, it's been a beautiful day. The birds are singing, the people are mowing, and and uh, cars are passing by, and people are blowing, and and it's just a beautiful day. And uh, uh, I'm like the guy says, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. But I want I want to share with you Psalms uh, 91, the confession, because this is powerful. This is powerful. Uh, it is powerful for a man of a woman of God who is speaking out of their mouths the things of God. It's important for us to speak these things. Uh, actually, uh, faith comes by hearing the word of God. And you talk this thing over and over again, um, it, it gets to be powerful in your life. And you get to believe it. And you begin to live it. And listen, Psalms 91, it, for those of you, I'm just giving you a chance to get on and um, and uh, gra grab hold to it and look at it and, and 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 what we did is we went and changed it and just made it personal. So it's Psalms ninety one made personal. So this is our confession, Psalms ninety one. I dwell in the shelter shelter of the Most High God. I find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. God is my refuge and my fortress. You are my God in whom I trust, and with great confidence in whom I rely upon. God rescued me through Jesus Christ from every trap and protect me from every disease. Glory to God. I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I am not afraid of the terror of the night, nor the arrows that fly in the day. I do not dread any disease that stalks in the darkness, nor any disaster that strikes at midday, because God is my refuge and my almighty God. In my home, no evil can befall me, and no plague can come near my dwelling. God has ordered his angels to guard, defend, and protect me and my house. God's armies of heaven keep me from falling. I walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my pathway because God because of God's love for me, I call upon him and he set me above all troubles. He delivers me from all fear and he honors me in his presence and power. He rewards me with long life and he shows me his salvation. You see, as we keep speaking this, as we keep declaring this, and I shared this with you. If you look again, I shared this with you uh, over there. In the, I shared this with you in the chat. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do it twice so you won't miss it. Uh, just shared it again in the chat. Uh, it's the Psalms 91 Confession. And uh, for those of you, that you can just grab it, especially if it's on your chat. You can just uh, it to just there you can just grab it and, and I, I imagine you can copy it and paste it uh as well but you can also inbox me and uh 
and as you inbox me, I'll be able to uh, uh, send it to you as well. I'll send you that, uh, actually, I'll send you that message as well. But I just want to share that with you uh, and uh, along with sharing with you uh, what I believe God is doing uh, as well in the body of Christ. I did a teaching yesterday. We, we at the church were, were able to go outside and uh, some of our congregants uh, were able to come over in, in the parking lot across the street and, uh, and, and stay there and, and, and listen to the word of God there uh, as we, we spoke. And it was important, we believe it was important because you, you were, we were speaking into the atmosphere and we were calling things also while we spoke the word of God, not behind those walls, but into the atmosphere. Uh, and we believe that that even doing that type of thing, while I'm outside today, uh, there's a different uh, spiritual setup, even even around outside. And you can speak against those things and, and tear down specific spiritual walls as you speak the word of God. Because when the word of God comes forth, there is light and there is life. Glory to God. So I want to share with you uh, just a few things directly out of uh, uh, First Kings, you want to get your Bible, we're going to take do a little quick Bible study uh, out of uh, First Kings 17 chapter. And uh, I want to pull <clears throat> out of First Kings 17 chapter, uh, beginning at the first verse, I'm going to pull some, some significant things that we talked about yesterday. And I want to go over those things again, uh, some of those uh, specific points again, because I believe during this coronavirus uh, situation, the men and the women of God need to understand what's going on. And because when we understand what's happening, uh, we're able to, to handle it. God give us the ability to speak over this. And so you're going to see some extremes. You're going to see sometimes in, in, within this situation where people are extremely being terribly affected by this and 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 yes people can be terribly affected by this we would have some of us even have relatives that pass away some of our very close loved ones have died in the midst of situ in this situation see because we're living in a world uh and, and and where god has given us the ability to grab hold to the lifeline even when danger comes, don't grab hold to the lifeline. No, does that mean that everybody who does not grab hold to the lifeline are not saved? Definitely no. Uh, saved men and women. Uh, let that plane uh, fly by. Saved men and women uh, have fallen in the midst of situation, just as unsaved. It doesn't. It doesn't uh, say whether you're saved or not because you've been affected. But God gives you His Word so that you can have a place. What we just read in Psalms 91, a place place of refuge. That's the Word of God. God Word. God Word is is a, if is His refuge, is your refuge. And the way the Bible said, it's it's a fortress. It's a place where you can run to under protection. Um, he that dwells uh, in the secret place, it's a secret place of the Most High God, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It's it's like being under the the the, the wings of the mother hen. Uh, glory to God. Well. Uh, and so, so the word of God is powerful. And I believe God has, a, 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 well, God has a way of sustaining and pro promoting us, even in the midst of these types of things, when it looks like it's, it's going bad. But, but God, in the midst of this, wants to promote you. He wants to promote you. He wants to take you from one level to the next level. And there are certain things 
It is not whether God is testing you or not so that he can give you a grade. But it's because that you pass a specific test trial that you go through that you are able to move to another level in God. And you'll be able to see certain things that's been placed out in front of you that the enemy thought it was for your for evil for you. But God turned that thing around for good. Does that mean that God sponsored it? No. Does not mean God is sponsoring any of this. God is not putting out evil and then trying to figure out, well, I put evil out. Let me see how they deal with it. That's not that's not God. But God uh, and, and he didn't tell you that that uh, you're going to have a bed of ease. But he did share with you that you will have a savior that will deliver you from this. And it is on us, our job, to just stand boldly in the word of God. So we're going to go to 1 Kings 17 chapter. 1 Kings 17, beginning at uh, verse number one. And, 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 and here is the story of um, Elijah moving from one place to the other place to be sustained by, uh, by God. So it, that says a whole lot right there. He spoke by the word of God, told the people what's fixing to happen. The folks in the whole area got affected, even though he was saying it's, a, it's fixing to be a famine that's fixing to come into the land. But even though he prophesied the famine in the land, God, we're going to find out, in, in 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, God still was talking. And during this coronavirus situation, God is still talking. And he's still giving instructions. And he's still telling you what to do. And if we take time to listen, we'll hear the will of the word of God. But God will always be bringing a watered garden in the middle of a dry spot. <laughs> and so we're going to find out that God uh, actually is doing the very same thing with us uh, right now. He's using, utilizing the church, the men and women of God, in the midst of a dry spell. He's using the men and, and, and the men and women of God so that he can have a water garden right in the middle of this this pandemic don't don't get stuck on what what the president is saying uh what the republicans are saying what the democrats are saying god is not republican or democrat and he wouldn't dare join neither party god don't join parties you join his party and so if you stay hooked to the lord then what you do will dictate to the world in leadership what the world need to be watching. So don't get so stuck on parties because when you die, there's no parties in heaven. There, there, there's no denominations in heaven. So if you stuck on your denomination and stuck on the party, you stuck. So unstick yourself. Now, that, that's not saying that you shouldn't have association. You associate with this group or you associate with this group. I'm not saying you shouldn't have an association. I'm not saying whether you, I mean, if you desire to do that, that's fine. But when you made Jesus Lord and Savior, you made his word number one. So if anything conflicts with God's word and you, by your salvation statement, I make Jesus Lord and Savior. You made, in the beginning was the Word, the Word with God, the Word was God. You made the God Lord and Savior. You made the Word Lord and Savior because God and the Word are synonymous. Glory to God. So we see in this where Elijah was uh, now in a, in a drought. He was in a drought. He was dealing with a drought. And there was a there were two two uh, subjects in this in this um, in this story 
there was Elijah who was dealing with a drought, drought and prophesied. And there was a lady in Zarephath that God was speaking to as well. Both of these were people who had faith in God. Remember, God looks over this whole earth to find one person that will listen to him, but he say he calls that the faithful. I want you to watch the discussions of Jesus when Jesus came, and you'll notice there is a whole nother level of talking that goes on that his disciples didn't understand. I call it faith talk. Jesus did faith talk and the disciples couldn't understand what he was saying. You remember when Jesus went to this tree? He did some faith talking to the tree and the tree died. <laughs> That's faith talk. You remember when they walked up to Jesus and told him, uh, well, Jesus, uh, if you don't show up, Lazarus, your, your, your friend, your really good friend, Lazarus, is dying. And Jesus face talked him and told him, and, and told him, basically told him now he can't die. And, uh, so they ran back and told him, said, we dead. <laughs> so he came back to their level to let them know that he was dead. Yeah, well, I understand he dead. But then when he made it over to a dead body, had been there three days, Jesus did some faith talking and he said, Lazarus, come forth. He's faith talking. He's saying to Lazarus, come forth. he's talking to a dead body. In the earth realm, in my earth understanding, then I would, I would, in the earth understanding, they would say, well, he's dead. But we got to understand that Jesus conquered death. So Jesus, who is the conqueror of death, he know death come from the devil. I can command it. So what did Jesus do? He commanded death. Lazarus come forth. Ignored everything else remember jesus walking with this lady i mean well walking with the disciples they was going they were going to to uh this this guy's house and this lady stopped jesus and she says to him well she didn't say nothing she sneaked and 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 she says to herself if i can but just touch the hem of his garment i'll be made whole well this lady was faith talking this lady decided within herself that if I can touch the hem of his garment, this disease that I have, I've gone to doctors all of these years, but this disease that I have in my body will be healed. Well, this lady is talking faith talk. She's talking a language that, she's talking a language that is not regular. So when she goes and she, she, this lady, this lady actually goes and, 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 and reaches around all of these people and she go and touch the hem of Jesus garment. And there was a power from heaven came through Jesus and stopped him. And Jesus says, his faith talk, he says, who touched me? And the men say, Jesus, don't you see all of these people touching you? And you ask us this question, who touched me? See, Jesus speaking faith talk language. Disciples didn't understand faith talk language because Jesus says, who touched me? And listen, let me tell you what he said. He said, no. Now he's answering these guys and he says, somebody touch me. And then now, 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 these guys are seeing a bunch of somebodies. All of these are somebodies. But there was nobody that could see in the realm that Jesus was seeing in the realm that Jesus was talking. In the realm that Jesus was seeing in the realm that Jesus was talking, there was only two folks. Jesus 
and that lady. He says, somebody touch me. And the lady grabbed hope to what he said and came to say, it was me. And this, when Jesus looked at this lady, he made a statement. He said, your faith, faith, your faith, listen to what he said, your faith. She was talking faith. She talked faith. It meant his faith and they were at a whole nother level of discussion. He said, your faith made you whole. It was the faith talking. So when you join the faith talking network <laughs> and the faith doing network, you can expect a miracle power working of God on this earth. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. When you join the faith token network and the faith doing network, you can expect the miracles of God upon this earth. <laughs> That's powerful. Now, out of all of these folks back at First Kings 17 chapter, out of all of these people that actually were the favorites of God at that time, out of all of those people, there were only two people that God was dealing with. And both of these people were faith talkers. They believed God. Now, let me just share with you. Elijah the Tishbite, who was actually, this man of God was prophesying on behalf of, he said, at my word, it's not going to rain. This is how this is how the scripture opens up. You'll see in the first verse, and Elijah the Tithite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel, standing by the Lord God of Israel, liveth, before whom I stand, he's standing by God, there shall be no dew. It's not going to be in the dew. It's going to be so dry. No dew, nor rain. These years. Listen to this now. Don't don't skip that. You can't you can't you'll have a problem if it if if it's just the first part of the year it don't rain. He said these years. He said, but according to my word. Here comes the drought. Just like a plague. A plague, a drought. God's word in the midst of that. You stand by God's word is salvation. So guess what the next verse says? Look at your Bible. This is Bible study. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, verse number two. Because now he gave the word of God, but now God gives him a word. This is his faithful man of God. So God turned around and I remember now, we are New Testament church. We are blood washed, all right? You're not living like they were living. But God had two people that he dealt with in this situation. Elijah the Tishbite is one of them. And then he says, as the word of the Lord came to Elijah, here he comes, here he comes. He said, you get thee hence and turn eastward, turn. Remember, when God gives you a word, he's always going to get you to turn somewhere. Now, if you keep on going the way that you've been going after the word of the Lord came, because remember one thing, when God tells you, when God speaks to you, you're going to have to turn somewhere. And so here's where God says, turn the eastward. All right. And hide yourself. He said, hide yourself. Listen to what he says. By the brook, hide yourself by the brook cherries. By the brook cherries. Hide yourself by the brook cherries. That is before joy. Now, this is what he's telling. He said, get over there by the brook. And uh, 
because I'm I got some I got some else, and I, I want you to see this. In verse number four, he said, "And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook." And listen to this. And I have commanded ravens to feed you there. Now, now ravens weren't no favorite birds at that time. Ravens, <laughs> they weren't, they weren't um, birds that you would favor. I said like that without having to explain it. But they were, these ravens were under command of God that they would bring meat and they would bring bread to Elijah. So here's another thing. When you promote to the next level, God will have the earth, listen to this, producing back to you when you seed into the earth. That's why your simple, your, listen, that's why your simple elementary uh, seed plant and harvest is that he deals with your finances. If you can't, if you can't do the very most kindergarten thing, and that is tithing, it's going to be hard for you to go to the next level in your in in God's finances in your life. That flood of finances that's waiting to come into your life is going to be hard for it to get there. And God is going to be hard for God to speak to you if you were disobedient just in the tithes and offering. But here's Elijah. He's ready to hear from God, ready to do the things of God. Look, look at what he said. Look at what he said. Look, look, look at what he did. He sent ravens to feed him. Now we see that he was at this brook. Now, remember, the prophet, the prophet, the, the, the prophet prophesied the water off. And then God sends him to the brook. Now, if you're thinking in your head, how is this, how is God gonna keep on giving me water? How's God keep on keep on feeding me? You're gonna get messed up. But you just have to remember that that part that says, and the word of the Lord came to him, it's the same thing as when the Holy Spirit on the inside is speaking to you and saying, Go over here, do this. Don't go there. Sit down. Stand up when the spirit of God is speaking to you sometime and you are tender to hear God. Now your faith talking. It's not just faith talking, but your faith listening and your faith walking. And now your faith standing and your faith living. And that's a whole nother level. Elijah was promoted. To operate in this level because what became common is that he didn't go all crazy when he, when God told him that ravens are going to bring you meat and bread not because they, but he had to believe that he couldn't sit and doubt that God was going to sustain him and those ravens were going to bring him meat and bread he had to believe it all right so he goes on not only does he do this, but he says, and it, and, and, and it shall be in verse number four, that you will, you will drink of the brook. I've commanded the ravens to meet you there. All right. And, and drop you off all of that. So, so he went and he did according unto the word, verse number five, of the Lord. And he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. Now that brook Cherith, Cherith had water flowing through it. But where do you think it water came from? It definitely came from rain. So water was fixing to stay there. Okay, and verse number six, and the raven brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening, and, and he drank at the brook. Lord have mercy, was eating good, and the raven was flying by. <coughs> and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up. And because there had been no rain in the land. See, so we see in verse seven that because of the rain, because the man of God prophesied. He prophesied. 
the rain stopped. So where God sent him, dried up. Okay. All right. So I want you to look at verse 8. Every time there was a manifestation of a problem, look at verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto him. You might want to underline that again. Verse number two, and the word of the Lord came unto him. All right. And then again in verse number eight, and the word of the Lord came unto him. Every time there was a problem and the word of the Lord. Listen, any time in the situation comes in your in, in near your dwelling place and you're looking, look for a word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord came. Look to hold on to the word of the Lord. Look to stand on the word of the Lord. Look to believe the word of the Lord. When the word of the Lord came to him, he had to believe it. And the word of the Lord came to him. And the word of the Lord came unto him. And the word of the Lord came unto him. And look, let's look. Verse number eight. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, saying, saying. All right. Arise, get to Zarephath. All right. He's sending him to Zarephath. All right. Arise and get thee to Zarephath. All right. Let me see what I, I lost my place here. All right. And let me go back. Arise, he says. And, and, uh, all right. It says, Arise and get thee to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I commanded, listen. I've been talking to a widow. I commanded a widow woman that is to sustain thee. Got it. A lot of times you don't know, but when you hear the word of God, God got some other people that's already waiting at that next level. It's just like this ladder that God gives you and you're stepping up from one place to the other. Just like that ladder. And you're moving from one place in that ladder to the next. There are certain things at certain levels that's there for you. But if you don't get to that level, they're not there for you. I mean, you need to graduate from this place right here. If Elijah had never made it over here, then that woman that he had been speaking to would not have been able to do her ministry to him. And he would have not have been able to do his ministry to her. As a matter of fact, God was bringing both puzzle pieces together so that we're going to find out. So both of them can be blessed. There's somebody that's there in this earth to bless you. The Bible says, given it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall God give unto your bosom. No, that's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. Shall God give unto your bosom. He says, shall man give unto your bosom. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So here's the deal. God has fixed God has fixed it so that you can be blessed from this earth. God has fixed it. So that your blessing is here. God has fixed it so that somebody else has the puzzle piece to bring blessings to you. You don't go around looking for the people. You go around looking for God. And more that you look for God's word, God will say, turn left, turn eastward, turn right, turn left. God is sharing, is showing you how you'll be able to listen to him and the earth becomes a blessing to you. Listen to what he does. He said, you go to Zarephath and uh, there's a lady that I have already commanded this woman to sustain you. All right. And so. He arose. This is what he did. He arose and went to Zarephath. He did what God told him to do. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, there was a woman that was right there gathering sticks. And guess what? Guess what Elijah said? That's her. That's her. There she is. And he called to her. He said, hey, get me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel. Now, you know, water was valuable at this time. So now he's pressing it. He asked this woman to get. So this woman now got to recognize that God had already spoke to her. She's going to have to recognize him. 
but she's still going to be pressured. A lot of times you're pressured, even if God speaks to you, a lot of times you're pressured. Sometimes you're pressured when God speaks to you, even about finances. He tells you, he'll tell you, I say, give you, give 200 because I'm trying to increase you. And when you, when, when, when the Lord speak to you about a $200 seed and you have a real problem, is the same problem that man had when he came to Jesus. And he said, Jesus, I want to be in the kingdom just like you. And, 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 and I want to live with you in the kingdom and blah, blah, blah. And uh, Jesus, tell me how to do it. He said, he tells this man, he says, sell everything that you got. And then in the selling what you got, take the proceeds that you got from your selling and go into the ministry of giving this to the poor. He said, because you then, and as he started explaining this to this guy, this guy turned around and he walked off from Jesus. The Bible said he put his hand in his pocket. <laughs> That's why I see him putting his hand in his pocket. He walked off from Jesus. He walked off, shaking his head and saying, no, I can't do that. See, so what you have to do, you have to be able to see past these situations and, say, and believe that God's word is a sustainer. Regardless of what you're going through, if God said it, I need to go do it. And that comes from hearing God, being able to hear God. And so he's now he's fixing to talk to this woman. He's telling her, go give me some water and that uh, so I can drink. All right. So that's that's step one. He sent the one woman that some water. But verse 11 comes. He was going to fetch it. This is verse 11. Now, here come the shake up. She was going to get him some water. She thinking she fit to complete the will of God. God not already spoke to the lady. That man coming. And then he said, okay, hey, lady, hold on. Bring me a morsel of bread in thine hand. Now, now this is where he messing up. He, he said, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But then, and the lady responded. She responded from what she saw. She responded from the fear of the of, of what was going on. She had death upon her. She knew that people are dying and there was no more water. People were dying. That, that, I mean, plagues and things uh, do bring fear. And so he said to this woman, bring me some bread. And this, this is what the lady said about her bread. She said, as the Lord God liveth, but she's still standing by God, I don't have no cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil. And she said, behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I'm going to go and dress it up uh, for me and make, in other words, I'm going to go make some bread for me and my son, basically what she said, that we may eat it but we're going to die. And see, the power of life and death is in the tongue. This lady was going toward death. The prophet of God now, who has a promotion now, because his puzzle piece is in the hands of this lady. He's going to have to stop this lady from heading toward death to bring life. And there's two words that you're going to find throughout the Bible. I think it's in the Bible some 93 times. But these two words will turn you from going toward death and it will get you to life. I want you to hear these two words. Fear not. And he says it to this lady. He says, fear not. Just go and do as I said. And that is a powerful part of this lesson. Don't be scared. Do what I said. I might even just take that one and preach on it. Don't be scared. Do what I said. This is what God is saying. God is saying, just don't be scared and do what I said. That's powerful. Don't be scared. Do what I said. I I'm going to tell you a powerful inter intersection in your life is determining by what you do in this scripture. This lady could have held on to her vision of fixing that bread for her son 
and herself, and she could have continued the death cycle, even though God had spoken to her. But she made a decision. It's important that you make a decision. Am I going to do what God said? Glory to God. Or am I going to do what I feel like is best? See, sometimes you feel like certain things are best. They even say, some people say, see, you've got common sense. Common sense. If common sense was in competition with Jesus, we'd have been messed up. I mean, just on a continual basis. Because a lot of things that Jesus did with, didn't make common sense. He put mud in the man's eyes, spit and made mud, you know, all of that type of stuff. I mean, it, it, that didn't make common sense. Stupid stuff all throughout the Bible. Noah was the stupidest man uh, uh, by, 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 the, uh, by the voices of all those people that stayed in the country around him. He's just a stupid man. He spent all of his old life. All of his old life, his kids were growing up building the ark. They got married building the ark because of what God said. But I want to tell you, whatever God said, always approve right because what God says stands. Glory to God. Glory to God. That, so let me let me get finished. I'm, I'm and, and uh, I might have to pick this up. Uh, later on, uh, and, and I probably will, as we talk about it in the next time. But I want you to go back and read this. This is First King, and uh, First King, uh, seventeen chapter, First King chapter seventeen chapter. And I'm talking about promotion. It's time for us to be promoted. And if you're going to promote to the next level, one thing you got to do is when you promote to the next level is you got to believe God's word in the midst of everything else that goes on. Well, beloved, I'm so glad that you came on, and uh, I'm so glad that you're with us. And don't forget, while we're talking about people that's in promotion, that's in the midst of all of this uh, that's going on, are you sowing seed? Or are you cutting the voice of the Lord off when it comes to money? Are you living by faith in the will and the word of God as far as finance is concerned? Or are you just giving? You know, if there's a wealth transfer that's going on, which it is right now, we are in the midst of the wealth transfer. If you're going to, it's going to be so important that you hear God about finances. I'm sharing with you right now. Our ability to receive uh, gifts, seed. This is good ground to sow in. I'm able to bring you this right at home, right now, because of the gifts that you have given for me to have the ability financially to come to you like I am. This, this what you see down here. This. All of this, 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 uh, this stuff right here. This, let me see, right there. That's lower. That's called lower third. That just don't come on Facebook. You got to have certain apps to put, and that, that little crawling thing that's crawling right there. All of that uh, that's crawling across there. That's, that's that's all this lower thirds. And so, what I'm saying to you, you all blessed us to be able to do that. So I'm saying to you, that's important because we're reaching people all around the world. And I want to share with you that it is important that we give. Father, I declare, just like when the little boy brought his lunch just to hear Jesus, he came there with just a few little sardine looking fish and a few loaves of bread. But he went home with a wagon load. I declare, Father, that as it is given today, that they will be able to go home with a wagon load. Father, you sustain this woman. 
you sustain at the end of this 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 uh this this story this woman was blessed the man of god was blessed and you you continuously blessed her they she didn't die but she not only gave life to herself and her son but it was people all around her got blessed i declare the blessing of the lord upon the people that are listening I say in Jesus name that you are blessed. And I'm hearing those that have a $200 seed, you plant that $200 seed. I've been hearing that I've been hearing that $200 seed for the past uh few weeks. So what did I do? I'm planting $200 seeds. And I'm sharing with you uh, our cash app information uh, is, is dollar sign walk fight faith. And uh, you can text faith to 45777. That's text the words walk of faith. Put it in the message and send that to 45 triple seven. 45 triple seven. That's 45777. And 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 put in the, in the line walk of faith don't put any spaces just one word walk of faith one word walk of faith no spaces you can go on our website that's bound by you that's been shown on here mount by church.com that's mount by church.com and go into giving and set up you an account and uh it you can also give in that in that amount as well well beloved we're glad that you came on i know we went a little bit over but we're glad that you came on and I'll take up what I left off the next time we come into Bible study. So on Memorial Day, we salute all of the ones that have stood before us. The reason that I'm able to sit out here is because we had people that went before us. Some even died, given their life so that we can live. Going and fighting enemies, but now, Today, all of us are in fight with an invisible enemy, but we have an invisible God that gave us an invisible word that will manifest powerfully. So today, we able to come against powers and principalities, rulers of darkness, by one name. That is the name of Jesus. Go forward in his name. Be blessed in Jesus' name. God bless you. And we'll see you next time. Same channel. Same station. God bless you.